she has said, God is already here. So I want you to tell your neighbor, God is already here. God is already here. And you are here. And I am here. Yeah.
generations falling down to worship to sing the song of ages to the Lamb. And all who've gone before us and all who will believe will sing the song of ages to the Lamb. A thousand generations, a thousand generations. Falling down in worship to sing the song of ages to the Lamb. And all who've gone before, and all who've gone before us, and all who will believe will sing the song of ages. Let's sing that again. Come on, we're joining with all of heaven. A thousand generations falling down in worship. Sing the song of ages to the Lamb. And all who have gone before. All who gone before us. And all who will believe. Will sing the song of ages to the Lamb. Your name. Your name is the highest. Your name is the greatest. Your name stands above. All thrones and dominions, all powers and positions, your name stands above them all, and the angels cry.
the King is here with us. Let's behold Him. Let's adore Him. Come on, just put your hands out and let Him encounter you. Open up your heart as He's moving in our midst already. Come on.
give you the highest praises, give you our highest praises. I don't want you to be distracted by the communion. You know, the king is in the house. Yeah, I want you to adore him. I want you to adore him. I see his touching hearts. His touching hearts. He's drawing you close to him. He's drawing you close to him.
Even as we want, we want to come to this time of communion, I want you to remain in this place. Allow His, His beauty just capture you. Allow His beauty just capture you, His majestic robe, His shiny face. Shara ba 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 ba. I want to come to this place. That you want to exalt him. Shara ba kiara ba 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 ba. See. Even as you holding the emblem in your hand. Is a remembrance of what he has done for us on the cross. Is a remembrance of the king that came and died for us. And on the third day that he rose again and he was ascended to heaven. He gave us this new covenant with him. That it was through his blood that we are set free. It is through his blood that we have eternal life. It is through his blood that we are adopted to his family, to be his children, to be his, to be heir. And we are being raised together with him and seated with him. In heaven is a remembrance. This is a powerful remembrance that every time when we partake it, it will ignite that covenant that connection. Shadabakaya basidi adabasu. Shabababa basi. Kudabababa basu. Before I receive from the Lord what I will also pass on to you. The Lord Jesus on the night he was betrayed to bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my blood, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let's partake the bread together. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Let's partake the cup together. to do this morning is that can I ask every one of you to raise your hand before I pass the time to Susie let everybody raise our hand and tell God that God that you are so good God that you are so good that you are so good God today this morning make ready my heart make ready my heart for you Make this a prayer for you this morning. God, make ready my heart for you. Make ready my heart for you. 
Don't be distracted. Just keep focusing on him. Just tell him that God make my heart ready for you. Make my heart ready for you. Here, a gift opens the way and ushers the giver into the presence of the great. Now, gifts could mean like our talents or our skills, but it could also mean our monetary gifts. You know, that means our money and all. And we're wondering sometimes, like, what can I do with all these blessings that God has already given me? It is through our offerings and our tithes, this opens opportunity for us to be a blessing back to the kingdom of God. And it will be used for the expansion of his kingdom. So as I encourage you, yet once again, another week, when you give back, give back with a cheerful heart, knowing that whatever blessings that has been given to you will be used mightily and greatly for God's kingdom. Let's pray. Father God, I just want to commit offerings into your hand, Father God, with whatever we have, Father God. We want to thank you for all that you've given us and all that you will continue to bless us with and continue to open our eyes to give back to you that way you will be praised in all the many ways, Father God. Use it in the expansion of your kingdom and for your divine intervention. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Yes, I think we can give God big praise. Can we do that one more time with more enthusiasm? You don't have to go back to your seats yet, just yet. Uh, the offering bags are going around. If you'd like to scan the QR code, it's at the back. On the left hand side is for your left, right? Your left is for one M. Your left is for offering, and your right would be for the M100 fund. Kindly do put a reference for YMFGAKL. Alright. Again, today we're doing a lot of different things today and I don't really want to waste time. I want to introduce our speaker for today. Uh, you can continue to stay here. Our speaker is Pastor Jonathan. He is born and raised in Malaysia. And after serving for seven years as a youth pastor, you can stay where you are, don't worry. Don't feel awkward, you can stay where you are. Okay. He was serving as a youth pastor for seven years and then in 2014, he went to Battles School for Supernatural. Uh, that was in California and then he came back and he has been serving and teaching everyone and he's really, really passionate about people and young people living life with the Holy Spirit supernaturally. And sometimes we wonder, right, like how do people do that? How do people live supernaturally? Well, he's going to share with us and I really, really, really believe the last two sessions, even first service and even yesterday and the day before that, it's been so heart-touching for so many people and I really, really hope God sees you today. So without further ado, let us welcome Pastor Jonathan. Come on. Come on, somebody say Jesus. How many of you excited to be here this morning? I heard there's some crazy Jesus-loving young people here at YM. I love Jesus. Come on, make some noise to the Lord. Hey, turn to your neighbor and say, so good to see you here this morning. Why don't you go back to your seat? I'm going to have you guys come back in, but why don't you go back to your seat again? What an awesome presence of the Lord. You guys are just amazing. I love the worship, man. Thank you, Lord. Those who are sitting at the back, come just sit in front. I believe the Lord is going to do something powerful this morning. Amen. Amen. Once again, it's an honor to be here in the house of the Lord. Um, it's, um, it's really a privilege just to see you guys and just spend time. It's my first time here uh, in the FGA and uh, just get to able to share the word. And uh, just see and come. How many of you were, were 
on our Friday night meetings. Can I see your hand? Oh, look at all those hungry people. How many were uh, on Sunday, Saturday? You were here? Can I raise your hand? Yeah. Awesome. What happened to the rest of you? Where did you guys go? Mid Valley? Is that a thing? <laughs> Mid Valley. Awesome. Amen. Are you guys good? How many of you are hungry for the Lord? One, two, three. The rest of you, where, where, what's happening? Yeah. How many of you are hungry for the Lord? I really sense the Lord's going to touch many of us. Come on, give the Lord a mighty clap this morning. Um, can we do something this morning just before we start, before we just get into all of this? I want you to stand to your feet, raise your hand to the Lord. Let the power of the Holy Spirit just fill this place. I know you just sat down. In our count of three, we're going to shout Jesus. Can we do that? We're just going to give the loudest shout of praise to the Lord, to the one who died on the cross for us, to the one that forgives us, the one that empowers us, to the one that still loves us, the one that is coming soon, to the one that's beautiful, to the one that's holy, to the one that's reigning in righteousness, to the one that's a miracle worker, still doing miracle, to the one that protects us, the one that always with us, our best friend, our love, Jesus. Come on, one, two, three. Come on, shout Jesus. Come on, lift it up, Jesus. Come on, Jesus. Come on, shout, Jesus, we love you this morning. Come on, we love you, Lord. Come on, one more time, Jesus. Jesus. Amen, amen. Father, we just thank you for your presence. Lead us and guide us, Lord. Put your hand on your heart. Say Jesus. Jesus. Come on, say Jesus. Jesus. Open my heart. heart. Come, Holy Spirit. Spirit. Fill me with your presence. presence. I'm hungry for you. you. Touch me, Lord. Lord. In a very special way. In In Jesus' name. name. Amen. 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 I fight your friend and have a seat this morning. Thank you, guys. I wish you did. Maybe you can stay here for a bit. All right, we'll just get into it this morning. Um, really, 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 uh, it's an honor to be here. How many of you are, are 14 years old here? 14? Wow. 13? 12? Wow. 12? No? 11, 10, 9, maybe 5? No. How many of you are above 18? Can I see your hand? Oh, this could be above you. Awesome, awesome. I'm, I just turned 21 last year. Like, couple of, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> Uh, we're so good to be with you. Hey, listen, I, I have a message from the Lord. But towards the end, I really feel the Lord's going to touch many of you. This morning, we had a, such a powerful time. Some of you really walked out with the freedom. But towards the end, I'm going to pray for you. But I really want to honor uh, your leadership here. You know, the young people, all the leaders. Can you stand to your feet, please? If you think you're a leader, just stand to your All the leaders. <laughs> um, YM leaders, can you stand? Can we give just appreciate all these leaders, guys? You guys are doing a, such a phenomenal job. You guys are changing lives, pioneering a movement of the Holy Spirit. Come on, let's appreciate all these guys. Thank you for what you do for the young people. We want to appreciate. I, I'm really honored to be with you guys. Really to see um, to, you guys are raising up such a generation. Please be seated and let's appreciate the worship team as well. You guys are such. Man, you guys know how to love the Lord. And, uh, and uh, I, just, I just love being with young people. And, uh, because God is doing something powerful, I tell you, all over the world. You know, and uh, I grew up, I was born in Joe, but just a little bit by myself so we can... No, so you won't feel like I'm a stranger to you. I was born in Joe Baru, raised in, in, a very, in a Christian family. At the age of 12, I had an encounter with the Lord. Um, I don't, I know, I, I know, I was always, I've never been away from the Lord. I don't have stories like uh, having drugs or whatever. And I struggled a little bit here and there, but I always loved the Lord. He kept me. Um, and uh, 18 years old, when I was 18 years old, I was reading God's general book, um, which is a mighty book about uh, how God used people, you know, and God did wonders, right? And I begin to read that word, those book, and I, I pray a birth in my heart, saying, Lord, I want to be like these guys, to be used by the Lord. And the Lord spoke to me and said, bring, bring me to America at the age of 19. And, and I went to college and different things like that. I was a good pastor, and we were, as pastoring about 200 over young people, we were getting into building a youth hub that's cost about $2 million. I didn't get, you know, and then during that season, the Lord said, I want you to go to America. 
I was sitting in my office and the Lord spoke to me and said, it's time for you to move to America. And I was in America, I mean, almost a decade I was there with the Bethel School of Supernatural Ministry. How many of you know Bethel Church? You guys know that, Bethel Music. So we were, I was part of that as an activation church. Actually, it's an act- activation pastor. And, um, I, and uh, I want to share this this morning. I was, I was with the Rainer Bunke School of Ministry. How many of you know Evangelist Rainer Bunke? You guys don't know? How many of you know Daniel Kalenda? Don't know? Okay, Google. All these guys are amazing. Right, right now, that's passed away, by the way. Right now, Bunke led about almost, uh, what now? Probably 80, 80 million people to the Lord in Africa. 80, 80, 80 million people to the Lord. And I was, I was in, um, I was in um, school of ministry, of, you know, the evangelism school. And I was praying like this, and I'm like, talk, they were talking about evangelism, whatever. And that's where the Lord showed me Malaysia. 2020, the Lord showed me Asia. And the Lord said, it's time for revival in Asia. Lord, the Lord showed me a vision and said, it's time for Malaysia. It's time for Asia. And I was, I was traveling there already pretty much established. But 2020, right before COVID, I came back and came back home. And since then, I've been praying for Malaysia. I've been traveling all over. Um, it's just, you know, every, every other week I'm out of the country or I'm here. Um, but I sense in my heart, young people, let me tell you this. There's a spirit of revival God is releasing over His church. God is releasing such a spirit of revival. I tell you right now, you know, I'll get into my message, but right now, there's a massive move of God in, in Brazil. Some of my friends are the young people are getting saved. I tell you, like 20,000, 30,000 young people are worshiping the Lord. The auditoriums are being filled. You know, this massive move of worship. Young people don't want to leave the buildings. They, they don't want to leave the church. And there's this like extended time of worship. No one is leading. Holy Spirit is leading the prayer meeting. Holy Spirit is leading the worship set. And it's not weird. It's not something like, oh, you know, something awkward. No, everybody's like in that moment of God. It is happening in Brazil. And right now in Europe, God is like taking the church out of the church, out of the building, and people are gathering in the four squares, and people are actually worshiping the Lord in a you know in a in a in a in an open space in in Norway. You know, I can name all my friends who are there. Just be part of this in Australia and all these places. We can see the move of God. What is the move of God? Suddenly, people are looking for God. Suddenly, there's an awareness. They they're no more playing games. They're no more you know going for shopping or whatever. Suddenly, everybody wants to look. For God. That's a move of God right there. Spirit of revival is everybody in the room goes like, I just love Jesus. I don't want to lose this moment. And that's what God is releasing all over the earth. I was in Tawaw, you know, I'll show you a video later, but I was in Tawaw. There's a spirit of God moving. People were getting healed. People were getting set free. You know, there's altar filled with young people repenting from their sin. And all these things are happening all over the world, guys. When I came here this weekend, Pastor Anand, when I came here this weekend, guys, I say this with the fear of the Lord. When I came here this weekend, I really feel the Lord wants to release that spirit of revival over YM. Oh, come on. You can do better than that. God wants to release His spirit of revival over this church. Over these young people, over college campuses, over your cell group, all your gatherings. God wants to move powerfully and there's an invitation for you guys. Come on. And God wants to release the spirit of the fire of the Holy Spirit. Wants to release that anointing of revival. Don't be shocked. Don't be surprised. There's going to be a day you guys will be like, we just want to worship the Lord the whole day. And God wants to release that spirit over us. But that spirit comes for those who are hungry for the Lord. God gives those gifts. God releases His revival spirit for those who are hungry for the Lord. Somebody say, I I, I need to get hungry for the Lord. I need to be hungry for the Lord. And and the key for you to, to see that happen, how hungry are you for the Lord? How hungry can you be? You know, I made a prayer a couple of, you know, a couple of months ago. You know, I said, Lord, I want to be the most hungriest man that ever lived on the earth. I want to be hungry for the Lord. I've grown up in church. I know what it means to come to church. I know what it means to take down notes. I know what it means to do cell group, all of that. But guys, deep in my heart, I still know and I believe there's more of God we need to get a touch of. Amen. There's more of God we haven't experienced yet. Amen. There's a glory of God, the face of Jesus, still, still very attractive. 
And I pray this morning before we start, before I start preaching or whatever, I want you to stir up your hunger. Hunger is a gift. What is hunger? Hunger is, Lord, I am in need of you, God. I just want more of you, God. I want to touch from you, Lord. Anyone who touches the, touches, or anyone the Holy Spirit touches, their life are never the same. But I pray this morning, with the time we have, you will go with the touch of the Holy Spirit. And how many of you will hear will say, Pastor, I'm re- I, want to, I want to get hungry for more of God. I want my time for the Lord to increase. I want to, I want to get hungry for the more of the Lord. Listen, we are not here to do another Sunday service. Come back, you hear a good sermon, four-point sermon, and go back, and it'll feel good. I'm here for you to encounter with the Lord. I'm here, I'm here because I want you to encounter the Lord. And if you will say, I need a hunger from the Lord, I need a touch from the Lord, it doesn't matter how long you have been a Christian, I want you to quickly stand to your feet because I want to pray for you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. 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 This is what we're going to do, guys. I want you to leave your seat. Come right in front of you. Pack up this place. We're going to just worship the Lord in the next few moments. But leave your seat and be hungry this morning. I tell you, there's nothing about my sermon. It's nothing about what I can tell. But it's God is looking for hungry hearts. The blind Bartimaeus cried out to the Lord and said, Lord, son of David, don't pass me by. Please touch me. And God is looking for a man and woman in this generation that will say, Lord, we can spend two, three hours in Netflix. But God is looking for a generation, Lord, would you touch me, Lord? I'm here this Sunday for a touch of the Lord. Anyone who God touches, guys, their life never the same again. Peter was a coward. Peter was afraid of you know, believing in Jesus. But when the Holy Spirit came on Peter, his life changed. He became the preacher of the gospel. Many of you need a touch of the Holy Spirit. Many of you are afraid. I see in my spirit. Many of you are afraid of things. There's a fear that's been holding you. Fear of losing friends. Fear of, of tomorrow. Fear of, 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 of things. I even feel, you know, some of you are even afraid. I a fear of encountering God. You're afraid, too afraid to come closer to God. You're scared that something, you will lose something. But the scripture says, First Timothy, you know, the book of Timothy says, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but love, power, and sound mind. And God wants to empower you with the love and the, in the, in the, in the gift of the sound mind and the power of the Holy Spirit. Listen, I was, I was, the, I was a stutter. I couldn't speak for a long time. I, I know I had a fear issue. Like I was afraid of everything. I was, I, I was afraid of crowd. I was afraid of people. I couldn't really speak until I was a certain age. But I tell you, one night at 7 o'clock in the night, the Holy Spirit walked into my room. It, you know, I, I didn't see him, but I felt him. I began to cry. The power of the Holy Spirit came on me. And he began to touch me. And he said, Johnny, I'll send you to nation. And you'll be a preacher of the gospel. But by now, I've led thousands and thousands of people to the Lord. In Africa, I led more than 10,000 people to the Lord. And every moment I look at it, I know it wasn't me, but it was the Lord. Next couple of months, we're gathering thousands over people in Tawau for the for awakening of, of Tawau. We're gathering people to preach the gospel. And that's the life God has called each and every one of you to be a life of boldness before the Lord. A life that is, you know, that's a life that's no fear. What are you afraid of this morning? What are you afraid? Are you afraid of yourself? Are you afraid of losing yourself? Isaiah was before the Lord. The Lord said, who will go for us? Who will, who will, who will go for nation to nations for us? Isaiah 6, Who, whom shall I send? Isaiah said, here I am, Lord. Send me to nation, God. Send me to my college campuses. Send me to my family, God. Send me, God. Send me, God. Send me, God. Some of you, the Lord is looking for you to say, Lord, send me and the fear going to break. Some of you even feel like you have a fear of knowing God. You know, what's the fear of knowing God? If I get too much close to God, I look weird. I might not be able to be myself. That's a fear right there. Some of you are afraid, afraid, afraid of what your friend will think. What your friend see, the fear of man will keep you away from your destiny. The fear of man will keep you away from walking in the destiny that God has called you. You want to compare yourself. You want to, you want to look like your friend. You want to, you know, you don't want me, you know, don't want God to touch you too much. You just limit yourself. Why? There is a fear that's holding you back. 
And the fear is not from God. Guys, fear is not from the Lord. Fear is from the enemy. But I believe this morning God's going to set you free. Every fear that you have, I don't know what it is, but every fear that you might have, God's going to just break it off from you this morning. Amen. Amen. I sense even some of you, you can't even sing, you can't even express yourself. You're afraid. That's going to be broken this morning. Every hand is lifted up. No one is looking around. We didn't come here to, to watch something. We are here to, to jump into the river of God. I don't care who, how long you've been in the church. Whether you're 40 or 18, it's time for you to just lift your hands to the Lord. And begin to bring to pray in the Spirit. Just begin to worship the Lord. And something is going to happen this morning. Come on, begin to worship the Lord. Say, Lord, set me free from the fear of God. Whatever fear you have. I don't know what it is, God. Fear of repentance or whatever. Some of you need to repent. You're watching porn or whatsoever you're struggling with. That's the grace of God this morning to set you free. Say, Jesus, I ask for your forgiveness. Come on. Say, Lord, forgive me for giving into fear. Forgive me for compromising. Forgive me, Lord, for not walking in the fire of the Holy Ghost. This morning, God is looking for a man. God is looking for a woman that he can use mightily. Are you saying yes to the Lord? Are you saying yes to the Lord? Come on, young people. Let's not say the same. Oh, the world needs you. Kuala Lumpur needs you. Malaysia needs you arise come on lift your voice and begin to cry out and say Lord touch me all over this place all over this place the Spirit of the Lord is consecrating us this morning Holy Spirit Set us on fire! Come on, young people, you pray, you pray. Tell the Lord, set me on fire. Let my life be the never be the same. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost, fill this place. Fear is living, guys. Fear is living. Fear is living. Come on, give your fear to the Lord. Give your fears to the Lord. Say, Lord, I give my fears to you. What are you afraid of? You are a mighty man and mighty woman of God. It's time for you to run for the Lord. It's time for you to shine for Jesus. Who said you're too young? Who said you cannot do it? Not by mind. Not by power. But by my spirit says the Lord. I am touch heaven this morning let heaven come this morning come on let hunger pull down heaven let your hunger pull down the presence of the Lord let the glory of God come on tell Lord we need a touch we need revival oh,
An angel of the Lord came to Gideon and said, Gideon, you are a mighty man of God. Angel, angel of the Lord visited Gideon. And but Gideon was saying, Lord, I am not the one that you can choose. He said, I'm the least of everyone, God. Gideon said, you know, in, in his tribe, Gideon was the most least tribe of Israel. But here's the thing, what happened, guys? Even though he was the least, the weakest person in the tribe of Israel, but God had a purpose and plan for him. What he was thinking about himself was that he's the least, the weakest, the one that no one can choose. But God had some other plan for his life. He said, I'm the weakest, but God, this is what God said. You can be weakest, but you are the mighty man of valor. It doesn't matter what you think about yourself. It doesn't matter what your family think about yourself. It doesn't matter what people think about yourself, but I believe this morning the Lord is telling over you, you are a mighty man and woman of the Holy Spirit. And all you need to hear is the voice of the Holy Spirit. So you just need to listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit. What He says about you is way more powerful than what you can say. And here's the thing, right? When you begin to listen to the voice of the enemy, the, the Bible says that the devil is accuser of the brethren. What is an accuser of the brethren? The ones who reminds you of your past. How many of you keep thinking about your past? How many of you are still, you know, still, still stuck with, your, with the guilt and condemnation of what you did wrong? That's a voice of the devil. Because the devil wants to remind you of your past. The devil wants to remind you of what's wrong with you. But we know the Bible says that therefore there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Amen. What does that mean? God will never, ever, ever, ever remind you of your wrongdoing. The Bible says He remembers your sin no more. If God doesn't remember your sin, guys, you should let the, your past gone. Amen. You should let the thing that you messed up, whatever it is this morning, there's a fresh start for you. There's a new beginning for you. And that's why repentance is so powerful. You know what is repentance? The scripture says, repent, you know, be converted that you may receive a times of refreshing. You know what is repentance? Repentance is not just, you know, asking God sorry. Repentance is saying like, I'm going this way, but Lord, I'm changing my mind. I'm going to go this way. And that's a life of a spirit of revival. You know what a man and woman of God who walks in the revival of, And how many of you want to be used by God? How many of you might want to make a change in this generation? How many of you want to see souls saved? You know, that's a life of a revivalist that we actually going this way. But you know, when the Lord says go this way, we're going to go a different direction. And that, that's the life that God is looking for. The life that you are led by the Holy Spirit. And the one of the most precious gifts the Lord gave when He said, I will go away, but I will send you my helper, Holy Spirit, that will help you, will comfort you and guide you. Young people, there's no one can love you, no one can lead you, no one can teach you, no one can mentor you, but the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is a person, He's here right now. Many times we overlook the Holy Spirit. We sing a song. We listen to a sermon, we go to church. But the question is, do you have a relationship with the Holy Spirit? It's as real as anyone. I have experienced Him powerfully. It's real, it's gentle. It's like a dove, it's so gentle. One of the way that He expressed Himself is a gentle. At times, you know, He reveal Himself as a gentle. Also, it's like a fire book. So, Acts, Acts chapter 2, he said, when the believers were gathering, they had a, you know, the Holy Spirit came like a, like a wind and fire came upon them. And they begin to pray in the Spirit. They begin to be, be baptized, filled with the Holy Ghost. And they became a witness. It is the Holy Spirit that empowers you to live a life that Jesus wants you to live. Amen. It's the only, the Holy Spirit can help us. To know Jesus. No one else, guys. No, doesn't matter how many books you read. Doesn't matter how many sermons you can read. If you have the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit will reveal Jesus from you. And many of you may be standing here. You don't even read the word. You don't have a desire for the word. You know what? It's not that something is wrong with you. It is just that you don't have a fellowship with the Holy Spirit. 
is a real person. It's, it's, a, it's a kind person. It's loving. It's compassionate. It's not going to judge you. See, Holy Spirit is not waiting to beat you up. Holy Spirit is not waiting to see if you've done wrong and He's going to leave. No, He's there. He will never leave you or forsake you. We live in a generation, we fill our heart with so many things. So many things, we, you know, with, with drugs and porn and whatsoever. All these things, we are trying to fill ourselves. But I want you to know, you don't need all these things. All you need is a touch of the Holy Spirit. When He comes, He fulfills your heart. When He comes, you don't need those things anymore. He fills every part of our heart. He's a comforter. Where do you need comfort? Where do you need God? I feel alone. Some of you are standing here. You're struggling with loneliness. You feel rejected. You know, you keep comparing yourself. You don't need another person to tell you anything. This morning, you just need the Holy Spirit to touch you. Your life will never be the same. Your life will never be the same. Peter was a coward man. He denied Jesus, but when the Holy Spirit came on him, he began to preach the gospel with the fire of God. You know, I sense this morning, you don't need another sermon, guys. You just need a touch of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You know, come on, we just need a touch of the Holy Spirit. But you look for the hungry ones. He looked for the one that says, Holy Spirit, come. Because he's a gentle spirit. It's not like he doesn't force his way into you. No, he doesn't. He's not going to be like, hold you like, you know, like your mom or dad. <laughs> And it's not going to control you. Do you know God doesn't control us? What do you mean God cannot control us? If God is controlling us, He wouldn't have put the, 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 the tree of knowledge of life and the good and evil. But, you know, He put both in the, in the Garden of Eden and say, you know, choose. Because if you love me, you will choose me. Love is a choice. Love is a choice. Love is a choice. God is not going to control you to become on fire for Him. No, it's not going to happen. God's not going to keep beating you to become on fire for the Lord. It is a choice of every man, every young people here. You're going to walk out from this place with the extra fire of the Holy Spirit or you're going to walk out in this place like as if nothing happened. It's a choice. Hunger is what's going to pull the heaven down. You go, Lord, I need more of you, God. I know I have an encounter with you. I know, Lord. I know the scripture, but do you really burn for the Lord? Do you really burn for the Lord? How do I know I'm burning for the Lord? That you, you can't hold Jesus back. You're going to keep shouting about Jesus to your friends. You're going to go like, you're going to pray for the sick. You're going to heal the heal the cast out demons. I was, in my, I, was in the, I was in my flight to Sri Lanka. And I hear, I'm sitting in my flight. And I suddenly started crying. I'm weeping. And I begin to love Jesus. Jesus, I love you so much because you forgive my sin. You know, you took away the porn addiction I had. I was so, Lord, I was so addicted. I, I didn't have a value to myself. But Jesus, you came into my life and you, you set me free from all this thing, Jesus. And I was just weeping and crying. And this is what the Lord spoke to me and said, go, go right in front of the deck. And I'm like, Lord, what are you saying? And as I begin to walk to the front of the deck and I saw the air steward is there. And the Spirit of the Lord said, tell her, to ne- not to take a life. Then I, I looked at it and said, hey, so sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt your life, but you know what you're doing. But Jesus is saying, don't commit suicide. And then she, she quickly tried to put a sleeve down and I could see a scars, you know, I can see scars in a, in a, in a, on a wrist. And she started crying and said, how do you know that? I said, Jesus told me that you're going to take your life. And I began to prophesy, I began to pray for her. She said, yeah, I had a breakup and I wanted to commit suicide. I'm a medical student, but I ended up being an air stewardess because I hated my relationship. I didn't know what to do. I put makeup. I put this, this, this mask to make feel good about myself. And I say, yeah, Jesus is inviting you. And Jesus can take care of that. And I, there and there, guys, the Lord began to move in the airplane. The power of God came on her. She get a touch. I had to hold her because she was falling down. I had to hold her. And all her students came. The power of God came on her. She got completely set free from that demon that trying to take a life. And also she gave a life to Jesus. You see, a life that's in the spirit, a life of in the spirit, it's not so much coming here singing song. Life of the spirit, not so much about you just reading the word and wow, this is awesome. Life in the spirit is you are led by the Holy Spirit every moment of your life. Every moment he he leads you, he speaks to you. And that is possible. Not just like pastors like us. Young people, I tell you, college campus are waiting for you. 
college campus are waiting for Jesus to Jesus to, for them to experience Jesus through you. And you just need to lean in and believe this morning God's going to anoint you. God's going to touch you. That when you have a touch, when you have an encounter with God, you will become a walking encounter everywhere you go. Amen. When you have a touch from the Holy Spirit, now you will begin to touch people and they will have a touch from the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Your encounter will turn this world to Jesus. Your touch from Jesus can turn this generation to heaven. Come on. That is a call of God over your life. That's why, young people, listen, that's why you keep hearing noises. I'm not good enough. You know, church is boring. You know, this is what happened. Why? The enemy has been lying to you. But this morning, God's going to break those voices. You're going to hear the Lord say, this is my sons and daughters in whom I'm well pleased. Amen. Amen. That's the power of life. I believe God is, young people in Malaysia, it's, it's time for us. We cannot go like, okay, let's see what's the cool thing to do. We need to get radical, guys. We need to get radical. I'm not saying like, you know, do something crazy. That I'm just saying, can we just love the Lord where we can have an encounter with God and we can become an encounter? How long are we going to wait for somebody to bring us fire when God is saying, why am I already given the fire of the Holy Ghost to, to change the world? How many conferences are we going to go? How many sermons are we going to hear? It's all it takes for you to believe. Lord, I'm in a walking encounter. Amen. Amen. If God can use me, man, guys, if God can use any, God can use me. I couldn't, I could, I, I was afraid of things. God can use every one of you. Every one of you. Next couple of months, I'll be, I'll be meeting the presidents. I can't mention the name of the, of the nation. They've invited me to be part of a government to counsel president and the parliament leaders to pray and prophesy over them. And I, I honestly, I don't even have a degree in theology or whatever. But I could only do this because of the Holy Spirit. God, I choose to say yes to the Lord. Say, Lord, one life. I want to be burning for you, God. I want to be burning for you. I was at Starbucks. I was reading my Bible, right? Just reading and spending time with the Lord. A guy came next to me and, and stand like that. He was just crying. Just crying. I was like, what's happening to you? I said, why are you crying? He said, I've seen people read Bible, but when I saw you, I feel I'm supposed to repent of my sin, he said. I feel like something is happening to my heart. I laid my hands, I began to pray for him. And the power of God came on him. He repented that and kneeled down, knelt down and gave his life to Jesus. And he went back. He went back to his wife. And why am I sharing this thing? God wants us to live a, such a powerful life. This is the life of a believer, guys. This is the book of Acts. This is the, this is the everyday life of a believer. But the fear holds us back. Unbelief holds us back. Fear of actually really following Jesus. The one who really follows Jesus, they'll be burning for the Lord. It doesn't matter who you are today. If you're standing here, you feel far away from the Lord. You feel like, man, I've messed up. Jesus wants to forgive you. His arms are huge to forgive all your sin. And make you as clean as it's now. And next few moments, that's my sermon for you guys. But this next moment, I want to pray. The fire of the Holy Spirit is going to touch you all over this place. Is that okay, guys? You know, you don't have to feel, you know, we don't have to feel super spiritual. But when He comes, He comes. Sometimes I can lay hands on you. Things can happen. I might not lay hands on you. But some of you might feel like crying. Some of you feel like shaking. Some of you might just feel peace. But let the Holy Spirit minister to you. Can you do that? I feel like Holy Spirit is longing. You know, my message was so different, you know. But I feel the Holy Spirit is telling me, let me, let me, let me minister to my young people. And He's going to put a fire of, you, of the Lord on you. Amen. He's going to put a fire on you. I want you to put your hand like this. Just close your eyes. I don't need to touch you. We don't even need to sing another song. I don't know. I have to hype you up. You heard the word. He comes. Holy Spirit has been given to you. Jesus said, wait. And you will be endured with power from high. All over this place, in this auditorium, you are the target of God's encounter. I even send worship team. Guys, you're going to have an encounter with the Lord too. All over this place. Sometimes it comes like a fire. Sometimes it comes like a sweet, gentle Holy Spirit. Comes. 
But before we do that, I want to just say this prayer with me. All of this prayer. Say this, Lord Jesus. Come on, say Lord Jesus. Come into my heart. Forgive me of my sins. Jesus, set me on fire. Holy Spirit, possess me with your holiness. Burn me, Lord. That everyone who sees me, they will see Jesus. Holy Spirit, come. Come, Holy Spirit. Baptize me fresh with your holy anointing. Let me not be the same anymore, God. Let my addiction be broken. Let my unbelief be broken. Let my lukewarmness be broken. For the sake of the world. For the sake of the college campus. For the sake of my family. Please anoint me this morning with a fresh oil from heaven. And let it manifest in my life, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. Just lift your hands to the Lord. Close your eyes and lift your hands to the Lord. This anointing of the Holy Spirit is going to fall in this place. Right now, right now, right now, right now, right now, in Jesus' name. Some of your fear is leaving you right now. Physically, you're going to sense fear going to leave you. You have a thought of committing suicide. God is delivering you right now. Touch. There you go. There you go. There you go. It's touching you right now. There you go. There you go. Holy Spirit, touch. Fire of God, fall in this place. Fill this place with your fire, Lord. Right now, right now, right now, all over this place. Some of you, I see tears in your eyes. I see, I see the power of God already falling on you. Don't compare your encounter with someone else. Let the Lord encounter you in a special way. Receive the anointing. Receive. Come on. Touch Holy Spirit. Fire, 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 fire. Fire, 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 Lord. There you go. Fresh oil of the Lord. There you go, every fear. Guys, fear is leaving you right now. You are not meant to be in fear. Fire of the Holy Ghost. There you go, there you go. Fresh oil. Fresh oil of the Lord. God is touching you, friend. God is touching you right now. Oh, wow, there's a mighty call of God over your life. Touch Holy Spirit. Feel the Lord. Feel the Fresh oil of the Lord, there you go, the noise. No more fear. God already forgive you. You're forgiven, guys. You're forgiven. The righteousness of Jesus make you right with the right standing of the Father. You're pure and you're holy. You are pure and holy before the Lord. Forgive yourself as the Lord has forgiven you. Some of you. Fresh oil of the Lord. Fill him God with the fresh oil. That go to young man. God is touching him. Mighty man. Oh. Oil, fresh oil, Lord. Fresh oil, Lord. Stir it up in our hearts. Stir it up in our hearts, stir it up in our hearts, a passion for you. It's just you and the Holy Spirit right now, you and the Holy Spirit. Stir it up in our hearts, Lord. Just talk to him, stir just talk to him. Stir it up in our hearts. Say, Holy Spirit, come. Fill me. Stir it up in our Tell hearts. Tell him I feel far away from you, Holy Spirit.
loves you and is so proud of you. God is not angry with you guys. He's not angry. He's not angry. He's not distant from you. Fill him, God, with your fire. Touch of the Holy Spirit. Fill him, Fill him God. Every fear to be gone in Jesus' name. Just let go of the fear, God, of that addiction, that things that's holding me back to be on fire for the Lord. Just let it go. It's a choice. Just let it go. So, Lord, you're worth more than anything. The cross of Jesus is worth more than anything. Some of you just have to lift up your voice and begin to pray in the spirit. Can you do that? Come on. Some of you just begin to pray in the spirit. Come on. If you know how to pray in the spirit, come on. Oh, some of you are going to receive a fresh oil of language of the Holy Spirit. Oh,
let's lift up our hands. Just worship God for a while. Just going to press in to worship God for a while. just going to continue to pray for a while. Those of you who need to go, your parents are here, you can go quietly. But those of you who want to remain here, we just want to continue to minister for a while. Holy Spirit is not done. I just want to pray for the fire of God to break certain lies and one of the lies that is lingering around this place is that I do not belong here that's a lie and so in the name of Jesus if you feel you cannot connect to a CG you cannot connect to anybody else it's a lie because you can connect to God and you only need God and God alone connect with the Holy Spirit you feel that I don't belong here, this is not where I need to be, you now I'm finding it difficult, I just want to break that lie in the name of Jesus Lord, this stronghold that comes in the form of deception, Lord we break that in Jesus name and they keep on telling us and taking us away and stealing us away in the name of Jesus Lord I just want to break that lie because we can connect with you and you are more than enough and you want to connect with us and you love us the second lie that I want to break in Jesus name is that Lord forgive us instead of bringing the fire and influencing the people around us outside we allow outside people to influence us distract us and take us away from from your call and purpose all of us here have a call and purpose in the name of Jesus and whatever lie that is distracting us <clears throat> from putting our hand into the purpose and the will of God Father I break that I break that lie I break that relationship I break that distraction I break that addiction I break that God in Jesus name whatever that is stopping us from fulfilling our purpose in you from rising up to be what you have called us to you and you alone oh God whatever lies that our friends have told us whatever Lord that outside counsel has come to our mind in Jesus name I break that and that Lord we are called by you all of us have a purpose here and our purpose is to glorify you. I pray this afternoon in the name of Jesus, Lord. Even if we don't know and don't hear, we will claim on the word of God that you have a plan and purpose to prosper me here in YM. And Lord, we stand on that. You have a plan to prosper me here. You have a plan to take me higher and deeper with you. Father, today we pray that the fire will receive us, receive this afternoon. It's a fire that has a greater purpose and that Lord, that you desire to see a thousand army young people that will be on fire for you, that will go to Asia, that will go to places to bring the fire of God, to go to places that God, there is no fire and is limited, but God, you want us to grow and you want us to be stronger so that we bring this fire outside in our workplace, in our school, oh God, and that this fire will spread to Asia. Lord, there is a Southeast Asia revival coming into this place and that we fit in perfectly well here God from the high school to the campus group to the working group God help us to take this fire and be a good steward of that fire God 
Now I want to pray for those of us who desire the gift of the Holy Spirit. Lift up your hands. You desire. There are nine gifts of the Holy Spirit and that's a gift. Something that only the Holy Spirit can just drop and deposit in you. And you desire that gift right now by faith, by faith and faith alone. The Word of God says, as we love Him and walk according to His Word, Lord, I pray for that gift of the Holy Spirit right now to impart of my dear brothers and sisters who are here. On all of them, just impart on them, O oh God, this gift of healing, gift of faith, gift of prophecy, O oh God, this gift of just seeing supernatural, O oh God, this gift of discernment, this gift that is long-suffering, O oh God, that it help us to win soul because we are willing to be patient. We are willing to be patient to see them to come to the Lord. Let the gift of the Holy Spirit just impart on them right now. As they desire greatly in their heart, Lord, fill them, fill them. Father, this uh, afternoon I pray as we take this fire, Lord, help us, guide us and help us to activate it and use it according to your word and purpose. May the grace of God and the power of the Holy Spirit continue to minister to us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.